to hat or not to hat? That's the question we'll introduce today in this video sponsored by Chameleon Antenna. A capacitance hat is a device that we add to our vertical antennas, our vertical radiators, and we add it either to the top of the vertical radiator or to the middle of two sections of a vertical radiator. Not at the base, if we add it to the base, then we're trying to treat it like a ground plane and this is not the right device for that. So think top of the radiator or the middle of two sections of your radiator. So this assumes that you get this somewhat off the ground. In the case of what I'm doing today, I'm getting it approximately 10 feet off the ground in between two sections of the MPAS 2.0 vertical antenna. I mentioned I'm introducing this topic today. The capacitance hat is something that's new in my toolkit, so I'm learning how to use it. And I think that's one of the great things about amateur radio. If the learning ever stops, it's probably time to shred our license and hang up our microphone. I think one of the greatest things about the hobby that excites me the most is I'm going to be learning for the rest of my life. This is a hobby within a long list of hobbies, and I kind of get excited about that. So what does a capacitance hat do? Well, a capacitance hat makes your antenna electrically longer without actually making it physically longer. And something else that a capacitance hat does is it increases radiation resistance and brings more current up the radiator. I read that somewhere. <laughs> yes, I actually just read it off of my post-it note. I don't know everything about amateur radio. There are people out there that are engineers. There are people out there that are pragmatists. Some of you, when you hear my description of what a capacitance hat does, your first thought is grab the slide rule out of your pocket protector. For another group of individuals, your first thought is grab some coax and let's go do some practical tests to figure out what a capacitance hat does. I'm the latter of the two. I'm grateful for the engineers. I'm grateful for the people that understand the science and develop tools for us to use. For me, I am mechanically inclined. I'm a pragmatist. I go test things and see, what does that mean electrically longer? What does that mean? Bring some of the radiation, the current up the radiator. Well, let's go see if we can figure out what that does mean in practical life. Let's start with the thought of making this antenna electrically longer without making it physically longer. The mechanically inclined pragmatist in me said, well, let's take a measurement of the military extension part of the MPAS 2.0 vertical all by itself, no military whip on top of it, no cap hat on top of it. I'm going to measure the SWR on 20 meters. Of course, I'm not going to have great SWR because this is too short to be a resonant radiator on 20 meters. I'm using the BD7 Maple ground spike instead of my CHA hybrid micro because the micro is a matching unit and I don't want anything here but pure SWR coming through to my meter. So let's go ahead and get the military extension on the ground or in the ground using my BD7 Maple ground spike attached to my coax and then we're going to get a SWR reading on it here in the shack and here we go. None of us should be surprised this radiator is far too short to be resonant on 20 meters. On the 1400 side of things, we're just under 5 to 1, and all the way over at the polar extreme of 14350, we are at 4.5 to 1. So let's go back outside, let's put the capacitance hat on the end of this military extension. Let's come back in the shack and see what kind of difference it might make. Here we are, we've run our SWR sweep again, and on the polar extremes, we're now just about at four to one at the 1400 level and at 14,350, about 375 to one. So the capacitance hat did what um, the technical manuals are saying. It made this antenna, or at least my military extension part of my antenna, electrically longer. As I've done some reading and studying on this topic, again, remember this is new to me, the size of your capacitance hat would also influence just how much electrically longer your antenna would become. So perhaps people would use this in a case where they're trying to fit their antenna in a smaller envelope and they want it to be resonant on a frequency that they don't have the envelope to get the height in. So they would use a capacitance hat to make it look electrically longer. That appears to be one valid use of this capacitance hat.
The chalk capacity hat comes with this center hub, which has six holes evenly spaced all the way around. So it doesn't really matter which stinger you put in which hole, but once you grab a hold of one stinger, you're going to put it in this hole and then the hole right next to it. And then that forms the appropriate loop. It has this free floating 3 8 by 24 stud. By free floating, I just mean that you can turn it in and out depending on what you're attaching this to. So you have adjustability to make sure that you get your vertical tight. Then it has six individual set screws that you're going to use an Allen wrench to tighten and loosen. My recommendation is to go ahead and loosen all of the set screws and then you can just go ahead and insert one stinger at a time. Now, unfortunately, the producer on the HOA ham YouTube channel forgot to hit the record button when he put together this capacity hat. So I don't have any perfectly straight stingers. They come to you straight. This one has a little bit of bend in it. I did do my best to straighten it out, but I do want to illustrate how we put this together with a stinger that's almost straight with these two set screws loosened so i can freely push in the stinger go ahead and insert it into one of the holes make sure it's seated all the way if you don't have these set screws up far enough the loop or the stinger will not seat all the way in so make sure that you have the set screw up far enough tighten down pretty tight on that set screw we're not going to be taking this apart in the future at least that's not my intent you're going to slowly and evenly bend the straight rod towards the other hole. Notice I'm holding it on the end. I have no support anywhere else on the stinger except the back here where it's torqued down and insert this one into the hole all the way. It will stay in place just from the tension and then tighten down on that set screw and your cap hat is fully assembled and ready for use. So what about that technical statement that I read off? It's a type of statement you would think you would find in a technical reference manual about antennas and performance. It talked about the radiation and bringing it further up the vertical. To me, that sounds like performance. So how would we test performance on a capacitance hat? Or how would we see if it's influencing performance? Again, my pragmatic mind goes, what can I do to demonstrate this? Even though I don't completely understand it, can I find a difference? So what I would typically do is I would take one MPAS 2.0 vertical, set it up in the backyard and attach a capacitance hat to it. And then I would walk as far away as I could get in my yard because it's only a 60 some odd foot wide backyard and place a second MPAS 2.0 without a capacitance hat on it. And guess what? That's exactly what I did. Now, when you do testing like this, make sure you have all the variables under control put as little variation in as possible, except the thing you're trying to test. So I have two MPAS 2.0 verticals, same ground spike, exact same coax, the exact same brand, make, length. I have the exact same box that these come into in my house. I have the same arresters that these go through as they come into my shack. Into my shack, they're fed by the same coax. You get the point. I'm duplicating everything I can with the sole exception of the capacitance hat. And I'm sending this signal down to whisper transmitters for a 12 hour period of time. Let's see if there's any difference in the results. I'm using the top two Whisper desktop transmitters from Zactech. I set them up to transmit simultaneously. I will stop them in the morning at the very same time. I'm doing this through the evening because I do live in a home that's part of a homeowners association. And while I often test antennas during the daytime, I do try to limit that. So if I can do testing at night, I do. So here you've watched me roll through the maps from 40 down through 12. And I would say this is a pretty impressive look at the Whisper results. Now, this is the Whisper map result related to the MPAS 2.0 vertical that had the cap hat on it. You would see a similar type Whisper map from the one that did not have the cap hat. So we have to dig down into the actual statistics to see if there was any difference. Navigate to a Whisper map tool. This is the tool that I use. This is the data set for 20 meters for all call signs 
in the last 10 minutes. If I was trying to find my information, I would put the call sign in here for the whisper transmitter that I was using. I was using my personal call sign for one transmitter and a club call sign for the other, and that's how I differentiate between the two. In my case, I was picking a 12 hour time window to look at my maps. My maps were very similar. So I would go over to database and you can put the same type of information in. All of the parameters that let you pull the data set, you click update and you get a data table. You're going to download that data table and I download that into Microsoft Excel. And then here's how I manipulate that in Microsoft Excel. The first tab has the data set with the no capacitance hat. That's the club call sign. This is the antenna with the capacitance hat. This is my personal call sign, KD4BMG. These are all the stations which reported hearing me during that 12 hour period of time. This tab combines both data sets. So I have all the contacts that heard me for both call signs. And then I basically took all of the uh, frequencies and converted them over to bands. So when I do my pivot table, I can see by band how many contacts were made during that 12 hour period of time. Anyone out there who has a conversion table that shows you how to get from a whisper contact to a equivalent 100 watt single sideband voice contact, I'd love to get my hands on that because I want to correlate this to voice contacts at some point in the future. Here we're comparing two identical antennas with one variable, that's the capacity hat. How many stations heard us? How many contacts were made? That's it. How many contacts? We care about that as amateur radio operators, so it's a valid view, even though it's kind of a brute force, quick, down and dirty metric. On 12, 15, and 17 meters, the no hat system actually just slightly edged out the hat system. As soon as we get into the sweet spot of the MPAS 2.0 vertical antenna, uh, it crushed it on 20, 30, and 40, meaning the capacitance hat unit worked so much better than the unit without the capacitance hat. 407 uh, contacts were made on 20, 301 on 30, and 65 on 40. That is more, 400 more, 301 more, 65 more. And then we had actually one contact on 80 meters on the capacitance capacitance hat unit. I don't consider 80 meters the sweet spot of this antenna. I would say 15 through 40 and really 20 through 40 is the sweet spot. So I think we've proved out that technical jargon that I read off for you there in the manual written probably by some engineer, certainly by someone a lot smarter than me, the pragmatist in me put it to the test. I think we have some evidence here that suggests indeed it's true. All right, this was my having fun with this, trying to understand it better myself. I look forward to your thoughts on it, friend. I'll talk to you soon. 73.